Hey y'all! Well, we're back to do some more DIY speaker modifications. And I know we've done some DIY builds. We did the GR Research Desktop Mini. Then we did the Swan DIY 2.2A 2A speaker that I really love the sound of. And I built it just out of the box. So then I tried their three-way version, which has a ribbon tweeter, it has this dome mid-range, which is really interesting. And then it has a six-inch driver. I haven't actually measured it. Six, six and a half. I think it's a six-inch driver. Anyway, and then we have these drivers here. And I told you when I got done with it, I experimented with the out-of-the-box crossover. And then I did the one that's popular on the internet. I'll link it up here and in the description. And that definitely improved it. The top end was a little too bright. But it still didn't have the bass punch that my RP600N has or the two-way speakers have. And so I was scratching my head. Is this a crossover deal? Is this, you know, a speaker driver deal? Do I want to try to make this driver, you know, do better? Or do I just want to swap to a different driver, and is that the problem? So here's the driver that came in the speaker. And you can see this inner circle here. That's the size of the voice coil. It's got a one-inch voice coil that goes around this little plastic cone that doesn't move. And so the cone goes in and out around it. And this is a 4-ohm driver. I am not going to pretend like I know a lot about crossovers and driver impedance combinations and all that kind of stuff, but they did make this speaker rated as a 4-ohm speaker, where all my other speakers are 8-ohms, and most of my amps only have 8-ohm taps. So I did try this speaker on the R8, on the 4-ohm taps, and it did help the bass a little bit, but it still didn't sound as good to me in the low frequencies as the RP600M, nor as good as the Swan 2.2A 2A speaker. But the main difference between the two speakers is the three-way has a one-inch voice coil driver, and the two-way has that three-inch voice coil driver. And one's 4 ohms, one's 8 ohm. And the speakers are rated 4 ohms and 8 ohms. And so some of y'all got to talking about, you know, just take the drivers out of the two-way and put it in the three-way, see what it sounds like. Really just didn't want to take those speakers apart again. And so did some research, and HiVi also makes a 3-inch voice coil speaker that's 8 ohms, that's a little different than the one in the two-way speaker. And Amazon actually had them on sale for like 75 bucks, and I think they're almost out of them. And I can see why they're on sale, and we'll get into that in a minute. So I just said, I'm going to get some different drivers and put them in those speakers and see what they sound like. And I know in the last video, in the comments, people were talking about, well, the size of the speaker magnet isn't the end-all, be-all, and I get that. And I know a lot of it depends on like the quality of the magnet. And, you know, you can have two different magnets that have totally different amounts of magnetism in them as far as permanent magnets. And so it wasn't the size of the magnet that I was interested in. It was the diameter of the voice coil, which I feel like, and I could be wrong here, I don't know. But it makes sense to me that a larger diameter voice coil is going to have more coil surface area to interact with whatever the magnet is. And not only, you know, it's not the number of windings, it's also the area that interfaces between the voice coil cone or cylinder and the magnet. And you're just going to have more surface area with a larger voice coil. And again, I... Could be totally wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that as the DC resistance of a coil gets higher, you have finer wire and more of it. 
And so a lower ohm speaker not only is closer to a short, and it's going to be harder on the amp, and it's going to throw off the impedance seen by the output tube. And again, this is all related to tube amps. If you're watching this you know, with a solid state amp, some of this doesn't apply. The output transformer in a tube amp doesn't have any impedance until you hook a load up to it. And it's the turns ratio of the output transformer reflecting the impedance of the load onto the plate of the output tube. And it's not just a direct like multiply math thing. And I cover that in a video and I'll put this below about how to calculate the turns ratio and the impedance reflection of a tube output transformer and how to measure one that you don't know what it is. So anyway, given that almost all my amps have 8 ohm caps and I've been told by the transformer manufacturers that when you put multiple taps in an output transformer you're compromising how good it's going to sound and they work better when they're a fixed impedance or fixed turns ratio. So almost all my amps have a fixed ratio and need 8 ohm speakers and so I'm going to put an 8 ohm woofer in these and just see what it sounds like. And no, I didn't do any math. I didn't change the crossover. I looked at the curves of the different speakers. So here's a picture of the crossover frequencies in this particular speaker. And you can see where the crossover is designed, where the woofer is rolling off at 1K. So here's the frequency response of the woofer that we're removing from the speaker. And you can see it goes fairly far up into the mid-range cleanly, but we're rolling it off in the crossover. But it also starts rolling off pretty heavy by 100 hertz, which is telling me that driver's just really not going to have a lot of low frequency response, whatever you do with the crossover. So here's the frequency response of the driver that we're putting in the speaker. And you can see here, down at 40 hertz, it really hasn't rolled off a whole lot from what it is at 500 hertz. And so, to me, that's showing this driver is going to go down lower, even with the same size cone. And I have to assume that a lot of that is because of the 3-inch voice coil. So... Got the speakers from Amazon. When they came in, they're like the ones that are in here, and they look like this one. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but the center of this is dished in just like these clips woofers are. And it's got kind of a rounded shape. And then the other thing you can see, you can see the diameter of the voice coil here. And if you look in the back of the speaker, you can see this big tube here that connects the cone to the voice coil. And then it's got like a vent here in the back of it that you can see right through the center of the voice coil. And it's out here. So then I looked online at the pictures of these speakers. And it was hard to tell because it's such a bright yellow color. But it looked like the center part of these drivers was domed out just like the ones in the two-way speakers. So then I went, hmm, yeah, those boxes were pretty beat up. So after I had installed these and listened to them, and we'll get to that in a minute, I ordered two more of these drivers, and one of them came like this. And as you can see, the center part of it is domed out, not domed in. And then I realized, here's, a, here's what one of the boxes looked like. You can see where the center of this got crushed in, and then that pushed this dome in. And those other boxes were beat up like that too. And so I went, crap. You know, the cones weren't dented, and they didn't look messed up, but clearly they had gotten punched where it reversed that cone in instead of being sitting out, or the dome part was domed down instead of up. And... You know, then I wasn't too concerned because if you look at these clips woofers, they're coned in like that too, or they're curved in. They're concave instead of convex. But then it got me to thinking, are those going to sound different? And 
Leave in the comments what your thoughts on that are. I don't know. I mean, there's a reason why they built these with that domed out, I would think, versus domed in. The two-way ones are convex instead of concave, although these clip speakers are concave. And so, one of the things we're going to be testing, is there a difference between the way these sound with it concave versus convex? And does it affect like the off-axis sound? I'm thinking it would probably only apply as you get further up in the frequency range, but don't know. So anyway, let me show you the difference again of the frequency response of this speaker versus these. This is the driver that came in it, the 4 ohm. As you can see, it rolls off on the low end. If you look at the frequency response of the new driver, the 8 ohm with the yellow cones, you can see it rolls off a lot lower in the frequency response, but then over 1K it starts doing some kind of weird stuff. And clearly these drivers are meant to be cut off about 1K, which might not work good in a two-way speaker, but would work fine in a three-way speaker. And here's the crossover that's used with this speaker, and you can see by 1K it's rolling off pretty steep, so the weirdness that we're seeing in the frequency response curve of this 8 ohm 3 inch voice coil driver isn't going to be audible because it's going to be just rolled off there. And it might actually help with the transition between the woofer and the mid-range having that little boost there right before it does get really weird. So, I'm sure all y'all are wondering what did just dropping that driver into the speaker do for it? And guys, it transformed the sound of this speaker. And I have to think the reason they went with this driver, the retail price on this driver is $50. The retail price on these drivers and the ones of the two-way speaker is over 100 And I'm wondering if... The folks that were designing the speaker originally designed it for these higher-end 3-inch voice coil drivers, and then because they put this ribbon tweeter that's expensive and this funky little cool mid-range thing in it, they went beyond the price point that the marketing folks thought they could sell the speaker for. And so they budgeted down to this driver and put it in. The other thing that I think is going on and again, I'm not an expert on speaker design, but I'm thinking that because this was a 4 ohm driver and it's closer to a short, the current that was going into the speakers was getting absorbed by the coil in this speaker more so than the other two drivers. And they weren't really getting enough current to really start sounding good. And so when I put these drivers in it freed up some of the current to then run through these other two drivers and it doesn't sound super overly bright like it did before i changed the crossover it just sounds better across the whole range and it now has at least as much bass as this speaker in the two-way does using these drivers and i feel like this is just a monster upgrade for these speakers so i did get one of those calibrated microphones that I can use with that Rev software. And that's something I'm gonna to have to teach myself about. And we're gonna be learning this together. This is stuff that I don't really claim to be an expert on or know a lot about, but I think it might be useful for me to share my learning process with you so that we can learn all this together. So we're gonna be putting that microphone in front of this speaker, I'm going to put these drivers back in them as a baseline. Then we're going to be putting these ones that are like this, that are concaved in the center, measuring those. Then we're going to put these convex drivers in, measure those, and see what that looks like, and see if you know, possibly when you get off axis it makes more difference, or if these make more bass than this concave one does. 
I don't know. It may make no difference at all. One of my friends, Willie, was saying that he doesn't think it's going to make any difference at all, and it may not. That's another thing. You guys that have some experience with this, I mean, I would think that if it really made a positive impact, clips wouldn't do this with their speakers, and they'd, you know, add a little bump in the center of them. So, don't know. Then the last thing I want to play with, because of the way my system's set up, I'm fairly close to the speakers, and I don't listen at super high sound pressure levels. That These ribbon tweeters are a little edgy to me. I have a feeling if I listen at higher sound pressure levels or was in a bigger room, they might be fine. They also seem very directional. So from Maddie Sound, I've ordered a couple of horn-loaded soft dome tweeters. And they're the same diameter, the metal part is, as this one. And it's got a real shallow little cone. It's not really a horn, I don't think, but it's, you know, it's maybe that deep. But then there's a one-inch soft dome tweeter in the bottom of it. And I'm going to pop those in, maybe tune the crossover to that, and see if, for my use, this is a better sound and speaker after doing those mods to it. So, anyway... Like I said, this is going to be a learning experience for all of us. And I'm sure there's some people watching that are, you know, shaking their head going, oh my God, what are you doing? And it's like, hey guys, I'm learning is what I'm doing. And, you know, if you think I'm making huge mistakes or whatever, you know, you can comment below. I'm not going to delete comments if you think I'm an idiot. But I do know putting this driver in that speaker with a tube amp, transformed them into really awesome sounding speakers. So if you've got a pair of these and you want to experiment around, pick up a pair of these three inch voice coil high vice speakers. I mean, I think Amazon's only got two of them left and I can see why I think the stock of them or whoever's selling these is just blowing out these ones that were all in damaged boxes. And there's who knows, you know, if you're going to get a concave or a convex one or what's going to come. Luckily, I've Got one more of these that was damaged. I'm sitting back and I got two that are like this. But anyway, I just felt like this would be something fun to do on the channel. I know there's a lot of sites that do speaker reviews, but I don't think many of them focus on tuning speakers for tube amps. And so we're going to keep this in the tube amp world. We're going to be tuning speakers so they'll work good with tube amps. And hopefully we can all learn something along the way. So if you're enjoying this, you want to watch more of this, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks all you folks for watching. This wouldn't be possible without you viewing my videos. And thanks to you folks that make donations. Really appreciate that when information that I've given you help with your personal projects or resolve problems, that you've tagged the donation thing. Super appreciate that. And until the next video, have a nice day.